Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, it's Taco Tuesday. The Dallas Cowboys, of course, this is the players' day off. Tomorrow they get back out on the field. And, of course, we've got Jerry and Stephen Jones doing uh, their thing. And, of course, today <laughs> we learned that, boy, it's an interesting day today. Um, Robert Sala was fired today, and he wasn't expecting it. In fact, I don't think Vegas had him as one of the top five uh, coaches to be fired. But, basically, John Mara... Uh, excuse me, not John Mary. Uh, what is his name? Jeez, hold on. Woody. Woody, uh, whatever his name is, um, went into his office this morning unexpectedly and said, you're fired. Get out of here. And um, that's all she wrote. So basically he's saying, you know, I got talent. My coach is ass ass. And that's one of the things that's interesting here because, you know, um, I'm going to I'll go into this more probably tonight in my fireside chat. But it's interesting because when the Jets hired, you know, Salah and when Miami hired um, Williams, everybody thought that these were great coaching hires, great young guys that are you know, going to change things up and do all kinds of great things and all that. And here it is, not so much, not so much at all. In fact, Miami might have been better off holding on to uh, um, Brian Flores, but that's, that's not my problem. Uh, although it might be when the Cowboys get rid of uh, Mike McCarthy, which I think would, might be a mistake. What they need to do is get rid of Jerry Jones. So Jerry Jones said that Tyler Guyton uh, has a chance to play this week, that the knee is not as bad as they thought. Um, yeah. Can we have a real conversation here? Can we have a real conversation? Because I understand... He was our number one draft pick, and we, of course, want him to succeed. Um, when I look at what kind of happened with Mozzie last year, where Mozzie really wasn't ready, and he wasn't really Dan Quinn's prototypical type of player, and I think that he might not have gotten a lot of work. Mike Zimmer literally said that we're starting from zero with Mozzie and you know, trying to build him some confidence and get him you know, technique-wise down. And maybe what we've seen is it's taking time. First two games, Mozzie didn't have anything as far as statistics go. And I will say that the only way you really play football now is by playing games. You don't go full go in practice. And you need those game reps to start getting into a group. And it seems like he's getting into the group. And I want to remind you that this is only five starts that he's had in his NFL career. And that brings me back to Tyler Guyton. If you'll remember, before training camp started, we heard that Tyler Guyton was probably not going to be ready to start the season as the starting tackle. Then Chumo Agoda, not that Chumo Agoda is great, uh, he's a better guard than tackle, was supposed to be the one who was basically taking the first reps. He gets injured, and then Tyler Guyton gets thrusted into the spotlight. The problem with Tyler Guyton is you're going from the speed of college to the NFL. And he's going from the right side to the toughest spot to be on an island on the left side. So you're facing the Lions here. You're facing the Lions. You're going to be going against Chad Hutchinson, speed rusher. You might be ready to play. Are we going to say you might be ready to play? So we're struggling when we're healthy. We're going to struggle even more if our knee is not quite right. And knowing that we have the bye week after the Lions game. So why are we going to try and rush him back for that game? That's the first question. The second question is, do we want to insert him back into the starting lineup right now? Tyler Guyton? Um, is an incredible guard, all pro last year. But the way that offensive line responded, getting Tyler Smith, your best offensive lineman, out there on the island was totally different than Tyler Guyton. Tyler Guyton, 
I believe, going into that game, was leading the NFL in penalties. I believe he had given up four sacks. So you look at that and say, he is struggling. Now, I'm not saying give up on Tyler Guyton, not at all. But I almost think that maybe, just maybe, you end up working him back on the right-hand side. And the reason I say that is, that's familiarity of what he did in college. Let him get his feet wet, working over there, able to catch his breath, take some time, and really get out there and be able to play. Because what can happen to a guy is you get him out there and they keep getting beat over and over and over again that they get they lose it up here. And we don't want our first-round pick to lose it. Give him some time to get some seasoning and don't rush him back from injury. Um, the question here is, does Tyler Smith want to be a tackle? Well, here's what you got to say. Left tackles get paid a hell of a lot more money than guards do. So I don't know that that would be the worst thing for Tyler Smith. Um, you know, if you're looking to get paid, if you have the versatility or as Stephen Jones likes to say, position flex. I can play left tackle at a Pro Bowl level, and I can play left guard at an all-pro level. And I can give you flex so you can bring the next man in either at left tackle or left guard. But the way the Cowboys offense was able to run the ball after Tyler Guyton got out, you have to say, we need that. We truly need that. So... We'll see what happens on this. This may be just Jerry Jones doing Jerry Jones speak and, um, you know, just putting stuff out there, making the Lions plan for both guys. I don't know. But I don't really think that he should be coming back next week, not with the way that offensive line played. Josh Ball played really good at guard, and the combination of him and Cooper Beebe, that youth right there, man, that made me feel really, really good. So we'll see what happens on that. Um, it's kind of funny. You know, it's it's funny with Eagle fans. So um, the Eagles released Devin White. And I'm not saying, please, I'm not saying Cowboys go get Devin White or anything like that. But I had a little fun with Philly 500. And um, I, you know, basically went back to his video where he was talking about the biggest offseason move in the NFL this year was Devin White signing with the Eagles. And I had fun with that. I had a lot of fun with that. And it seems like some Eagle fans are a little butthurt and are literally saying, why are you talking about us? Why aren't you focusing on your own team? And my thing is, is you're going to tell me why am I worried about another team when you live here on my channel? which is another team from your team. Do I have that right? So you're, you're going to tell me why am I worried about your team and you're here worrying about my team. Did I get that right? Shut the fuck up. Shut all the way the fuck up until you reach the top of shut fuck mountain where there are no more fuck ups. Have a good one.